Hello, hello, and welcome to part two of my weird manual flight planning methods technique thingy me jig. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be looking at figuring out how to um, arrive at an airport, uh, kind of using manual. My kind of uh, it's a manual kind of flight planning method that I personally use. As I said, it's a bit clunky. It's probably not uh, any official way of doing things, but it's you know just how I personally do things. So, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the first part of this flight, I took off from Palma de Mallorca. We're got up, we're cruising at 33,000 feet at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is, during the cruise, I'm going to start figuring out how we're going to be landing at Gibraltar Airport on the southern coast of Spain. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what the weather is like at Gibraltar. So, personally, I would go to a METAR report. Um, I've got a little METAR app on my phone um, because the the main thing you want to to f find out at your arrival airport is what the wind is doing because when you know what the wind is doing you know which runway you're going to be landing on so uh, after I bashed in the uh, airport code which is LXGB for Gibraltar uh, I got um, the information that the winds are coming from a direction of 230 at 7 knots now, Gibraltar Airport has uh, an east to west runway, 0927, so we're going to be landing on runway 27 at Gibraltar. So, you want to make a note of that, just note it down on a piece of paper, um, so that you kind of have that set in your mind, you know, how you're going to be, uh, at the very least, how you're going to be landing and what direction you're going to be landing in. Now, <coughs> going back to uh, my online searches, I managed to find a few charts here for Gibraltar Airport. Now because it's quite a small airport there doesn't seem to be a proper arrival as such but I did find this page here which is the closest thing that I can find to arrival instructions. So you can see that we've got um, an airway here and then it gives us an arrow which says to runway 27 actually let me zoom in a bit here that a bit bigger. So we've got this kind of airway going here to this waypoint which is called Alpha and you can see we need to be at that at 3000 feet and then you can see it gives us an arrow to runway 27 and we also have a radial of 120 degrees. Now if we have a look at Sky Vector again what I've had to do is I've had to switch on to low altitude airways we've got the Malaga VOR which was the last VOR that we planned for uh, in the previous video and we need to be leaving that on a radial of 214 degrees which takes us down towards this alpha waypoint. Now you can notice the alpha waypoint isn't actually on this airway, this B11 airway so we're going to have to use a tiny bit of maybe dead reckoning here to uh, to get to it um, but judging by this chart, let, let me explain how I kind of interpret this approach so from Malaga we're going to fly a radial of 214 away and as we fly this radial we're going to descend down to about 3000 feet. Now you can see that uh, we've got the B11 airway here which takes us to Pimos which is actually listed on this chart here. Now what I'm going to be doing uh, sorry, if we have a look at the sky vector again, you can see it says B1147. So that means this kind of, from the VOR to PIMOS is 47 nautical miles. So I'll know once I hit the PIMOS uh, kind of waypoint there. What I'm going to do is once I hit that, I'm going to flick the plane onto heading hold. And then I'm going to tune into the Gibraltar VOR. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the course to... Uh, the reciprocal of 120 because we're going to be flying directly towards Gibraltar we need to ch we need to take the reciprocal radial there which will be at 300 degrees <coughs> so I'm going to set the um, VOR into that once we hit PIMOS and then what should happen is uh, once we hit Alpha well, I don't know if we're going to fly directly over Alpha but once we get close to that we should intercept that radial and do roughly a 90 degree turn and start flying in towards Gibraltar Airport. Now, Gibraltar Airport doesn't appear to have a ILS system, so what we're going to do 
is uh, approach it from the sort of southeast, and then we'll simply have to change the VOR round to 270 degrees so we can get ourselves lined up with the runway at a nice distance there. So to figure out our altitude, you can see we've got a second part to this chart here. So it says at six nautical miles we need to be at roughly 1,500 feet. So uh, we've got a kind of a, a guidance for what altitude we should be at at a given distance from the airport. So that's kind of going to be our kind of approach there. So it's not a proper ILS approach as such, um, but that gives us en enough in information to do it as an instrument approach. So. Uh, that's how we're going to fly into Gibraltar there. So, what I'm going to do is uh, obviously note, make a note of all of that, make a note of the uh, Gibraltar VOR frequency, um, so obviously so we can tune into that once we get closer there. Um, and I'm just going to kind of write all of that down on a scrap of paper so I have that clearer in my mind what I'm going to be doing. And then what I'm going to do just now is kind of cut the video here and join and you'll kind of join me again as we uh, hit Malaga and as we begin our descent. Hey guys, just a quick update before I begin the descent. So I was thinking, you know, I didn't know exactly when I was going to begin my descent. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky to figure out, well, how far away from the airport do I begin my descent or where or when do I begin my descent? Um, I actually found that a good sort of simple way of calculating it. Now this is just a very kind of rough guide um, but uh, I thought it's, it's something that could be really handy especially if you're flying like this and um, it's something worth sharing. So what you do is you start you take your sort of starting altitude and then you look at the altitude that you want to descend to. So at the moment I'm cruising along at 33,000 feet and I want to descend down to 3,000 feet. Um, that's the altitude that I needed to be at at the alpha waypoint. So what you do is you take your start altitude and subtract your target altitude. So 33,000 feet minus 3,000 feet gives me 30,000. So that's the that's the kind of the overall change in altitude that I need to make when I descend is 30,000 feet. So we take 30,000 feet and divide it by 1,000, which gives us 30. That's simply just to get rid of the extra zeros. It just makes dealing with the numbers a bit easier, and you know you can calculate it much quickly, much more quickly, and much easier. And then to find you the distance that you need to be, be, or you know, how far away from the airport you need to begin your descent, you take your kind of, you take your number there, so 30, and multiply it by three and that gives you 90, which is your kind of rough distance. So what I need to be doing is I need to begin my descent approximately 90 nautical miles from the waypoint. So I hope that kind of makes sense. It's just a quick little calculation that I found. I was looking online just now because I, I was thinking about it. Um, so what that's going to translate to, if we have a look at the charts again, uh, so if we go back to Sky Vector, so it's 47 nautical miles from Malaga to Pimos um, and then I'm not sure how far it's going to be. It looks like it's going to be approximately maybe 10 from Pimos to Alpha because from whoops, from Pimos to Galto looks like it's going to be 22 miles. Alpha is just about in the middle of those two so let's say 55 miles from Malaga to Alpha. So what I'll do is I'll about 40 miles before, uh, 40 miles away from the Malaga VOR, which I am approaching now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my descent then, and hopefully just as we're reaching the alpha waypoint, we should just about be uh, finishing our descent at 3,000 feet. Um, so what I shall do is uh, sort of cut the video again, and uh, I'll bring I'll bring you back in just as we are approaching the alpha waypoint, and I'll let you know if that uh, that calculation worked out or not. Okay, welcome back. So we are well on our way on our descent towards Gibraltar Airport. Um, now we're just about forty-seven nautical miles away from Malaga, so we're passing. We should be passing over that Pimos waypoint at the moment. 
Um, but you can see that we're down at about 7,700 feet. So that rough top of descent calculation seems to be okay. Um, now I did have to slow my speed down a little bit to make sure that I was descending in good time as well. But um, for a rough and simple calculation, it seems to be, you know, pretty decent. You know, obviously you need to take into account your rate of descent and your speed for a more accurate top of descent calculation. But uh, for just being a rough, quick calculation, it seems to be working out okay. So what I'm going to start doing now is preparing to turn towards Gibraltar. So I'm going to select heading hold there. I'm going to flick over to the Gibraltar VOR. Now, interestingly enough, it doesn't give me the identifier there, but it gives me the distance, uh, which is pretty strange. Uh, anyway, we need to be flicking this around to uh, 300. And I've just realized that while it's giving me a distance, it's not giving me any VOR info there. Okay. Let's have another very quick look at this. Uh, not that one, this one. Uh, it's only a DME there. 13.6. So how am I meant to figure out how to get there? Okay. What I'll do instead is turn the rounds to a heading of 300 zero zero degrees. So just as we're beginning our turn, we're at 4,600 feet, so we'll descend, uh, actually I'll continue the descent down to 2,000 feet. Oh, it should be on this little point of land here. Okay, let's uh, have a look, a closer look at this here. See if we can figure this out quickly. So it's not right on the point, but it's a bit further up. Okay, that's a bit of a bummer, that. Um, It's definitely a DME and not a, an ADF there. Yeah, DME. Oh, hang on, that's from way 9. Okay. Well, it's going to make for an interesting landing, whatever happens. So, what I'll do is I'll just bring the speed down quite a bit now. So as we level off, that's going to help the speed come down as well there. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to do a, have to do this a little bit GPS assisted here. So LXGB, so that's Gibraltar there, so we're definitely heading towards it. Um, but I don't seem to have any method of navigating to it accurately. We've got the uh, <coughs> the DME there, but no VOR, interestingly enough. Never mind. guess that's why uh, a GPS comes in handy. So what we're going to do is we're just going to flick heading to the right 10 degrees just so we can line up a bit earlier and what I'll also start looking to do is getting things like the flaps and the landing gear out and getting everything ready for landing uh, Approach speeds I haven't calculated. Uh, I'm not going to worry about contacting the air traffic control. Uh, oops, sounds messing up a little bit there. So I can see the uh, Vazio, the Papi lights there. So that's all good. Uh, 
uh, what I'll do is save all that now. I'm uh, just going to fly this the rest of this in manually. Going to be brave. Drop the landing gear. There we go. So I think I put the flaps out too far, or, or the landing gear was still extending as the uh, as I put the flaps down there. Not a big deal. So there we have the runway just to the left side of the screen. It's a real bummer that it doesn't isn't a VOR. But oh well, it's nice to do a, a full manual landing for a change. Although I am struggling to lose the speed there. A little bit low at the moment. So what there's a pull the nose up just to level off. Jeez, oh I'm thinking very low. Uh, let's try and raise my view a little bit. Don't sink. Yeah, yeah. Way ahead of you. Last stage of flaps going out, and now we're a little bit too high. <laughs> Sink rate. Yep, yep, got you. Sink got you. Rate. Still coming in a bit too fast there, I would suspect. Although I've got no uh, marker on the speed tape there to to tell me um, what the stall speed is, sadly. <laughs> Never mind. So just a little bit offline at the moment. Doesn't seem to be okay now. So it looks like it's quite a short runway, so we're going to have to slam on the brakes once we get down. And there we go. <laughs> Dropped the nose quite quickly there. That's just a full brake in there. I didn't. I forgot completely. Forgot about putting reverse thrusters on. To be honest, but we're down. Nice and safely in Gibraltar. So there we go, so that's the second leg of my sort of European tour in the Learjet 45. So, uh, rather than waste your guys' time with taxiing to the uh, airport, I'm just going to cut the video here. So, thank you very much for watching, take care out there, and I will catch you later.